Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Though we're well on the way to Halloween, this was our first big project of 2021, and boy did our studio need filling up. We're creating a little something here that we've made a few of in the past, but never one quite this big. We're creating a rock ramp of course for a company called Azuzu, and our contact Debbie Warren had seen one of our previous ramps created for Mercedes-Benz World in one of our older project videos, and thought damn, we'd love one of those. This ramp is going to hold one of their top of the line pickup trucks, which is a whopping 5 meters long. We've drawn out the footprint so we know where to work up to, and we're going to predominantly focus on the rocks around here in the workshop. Starting with our familiar 8x4x2 foot billets of polystyrene, we begin by blocking out around the footprint on the floor and cutting the foam down to size using a hot wire. The truck is eventually going to be pitched at an angle by raising the back left wheel of the vehicle. We need to make sure that our carving not only accommodates for the height that the vehicle is going to be sitting at, but also its pitch, to make sure that none of our sculpture touches the sides by the time the truck is leaning forward and tipping slightly to the side. It's a tricky thing to do, seeing as the truck is never going to be physically here in our studio to test it out. Oh, lovely Jess. But it's much easier to make changes and plan during the polystyrene stage than it is later on in the process. Trying to edit something like fiberglass or the concrete, especially when we're on site, is something we definitely don't want to be doing, so better to get it right now. As useful as the hot wire is to cut the form down to size and take material away, sometimes you need to be a little more dramatic. Yeah, <laughs> this is what you all came for really. A little bit of hand carving here with the big bad boss. Aiden's using nail and wire brushes to hone the polystyrene down to more organic forms. It's hot work here in the studio, especially when you're carving at five times the speed. With the bulk of the carving completed, we're now cutting the sculpture down into manageable size segments. Breaking it down like this is so the entire sculpture can travel in pieces on the lorry and can be assembled on site at the other end, but it also means we can tackle each piece individually here in the studio rather than trying to work around one solid lump. I mean, we're already working around one solid lump. Yours truly in the orange t-shirt. <laughs> no, not that orange t-shirt, that's Kevin. We're making sure there's enough clearance for the truck to tip over and not hit the edge of the rocks on the lower side, whilst ensuring the majority of the rock work remains relatively snug. Uh, oh, what's that? Secretly saw sticky back tin for you, you say? Oh my. The tin foil provides a protective barrier between the polystyrene and the polyester resin going on top to save the foam from literally being melted away. Every square inch needs to be covered on all six pieces of the sculpture. Thank you. 
Moving on to the fiberglass now, we're using a general purpose resin as opposed to a class O, as general purpose is more suited for outdoor installations. It has less of a fire retardancy, but is more cost effective for the client and more suitable for this project. Look out for Henry! Once we've gone on with a sturdy build-up of 4 ounces, we leave this to set and sand it down to remove any sharp points. Whilst we've been tackling the rock side of the project, we've had the metalwork created by Ornwick Engineering. They're a company just across town from us, almost next door to our old unit, and to have a steel fabrication and welding specialist make this for us, we can then assure the client it's structurally sound and can take the weight of the project, and we're now degreasing and treating this here in the studio for an outside installation. Oh. Okay, we're recording. Much like the individual rock sections, the metalwork frame has been created in two smaller pieces and this is so that we can easily manoeuvre this around our studio, ease of loading and unloading on and off the lorry, and ease of positioning at the other end on site. It's all of these little things that help contribute towards saving the cost for the client. For argument's sake, Debbie doesn't need to hire any special equipment or a particularly large crew when unloading at the other end on location, just a four-man team, the same as we'll be loading up here. Hey, Aiden, come give us your thoughts. Yeah. Give us those words of wisdom. Here we have all the metal work done, nice and strong, powerful. It can take at least two tons of weight, five meters long by 1.59 wide. Nice little ramps that can come off and on and put inside the job. All the polystyrene blocks are numbered, they get fit up around the job once the truck's on the lorry. Let's see those muscles, Jess. <laughs> Here, a water-based, flexible concrete is being mixed up, which we're going to spray over the entire fiberglass surface. This will lose that woven fiberglass matte look and give the whole piece a more rocky texture. Once the concrete has air dried, Aiden goes to work with a paint gun, dusting in the deeper spots to accentuate the depth and the 3D-ness, and generally giving the rock a more dynamic look. We've already gone over the metal work with a red oxide layer, but we're backing this up with a hammerite paint for better protection outdoors. The darker colour of the hammerite also doubles up to favour the fact that we don't really want to be seeing much of the ramp under the wheels of the truck on location. Getting to the really pretty stuff now. Roof's going, well, just roof really. Roof's going over with numerous colours where barely any oomph is being put through the air gun. The result is a spittle effect of loads of colour layers for a more natural feel. Even though we're confident everything all goes together just fine, we're having a dummy run here in the studio and we've put together a little video for the client so they can see the process as well. Aiden's going to be heading up to site regardless, but it's just a comfort for the client to see the entire build not only complete, but thought out, tried and tested.
When the truck is reversed onto the ramp on site, the driver needs to favour the top side of the ramp just to be sure there's no contact with any of the rock on the lower side where the vehicle is leaning down towards. There are pre-drilled bolt holes and welded nuts on the frame, so everything holds together when the vehicle's in motion. The rock pieces don't require fixing together, but simply butt up against the job, as I highly doubt anyone's going to be running off with one of these anytime soon. This is now all ready to go, by which we've let our client know that we've arranged transportation, and it's going to be on its way to the outdoor event. Just taking a moment to say thank you very much to Debbie Warren for a smooth process and great communication on this project. Aidan will see you on site. Here we have all the rock on the um, 40 foot container with the metal work as well at the bulkhead. Driver's just going to make sure that it's um, all the strapped down properly and as it's fibre class it can put a little bit of tension on everything to stop it from shifting around. But yeah, nice comfortable space on that lorry, that's good. Jay just put it up onto the uh, the metal work and needed a bit of a bit of a helping hand just on this area before the bumper hit before it started to go up. But only just. We had somebody stand on the front of the car to give it a ground twist to the front so it lifted the back up that touch. Here we have the car all set up on the show and this is a prime spot as far as the show is concerned because we have the pavilion entrance here and the show guide and all the other cars are going to be lined up here on display as well. Hmm, something tells me we should have popped the company van on there first. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below, and for all of our true die-hard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos, so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here. So visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support, however big or small, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching.